This is a video that I decided to put together for those that are interested in interacting with their patients in an efficient way, letting them know where their pain generators are and what you're going to do about it after revealing pain under flexion and extension. As we know, when patients undergo flexion and have back or leg pain, there are several areas that could possibly be causing the pain. Primarily discogenic, it could be the facet capsule, or it could be relative instability. This is a general differential here. We know that under flexion load, the nucleus pushes posteriorly against the annulus. And we know that the posterior aspect of the annulus is innervated with the sinuvertebral nerve. You can demonstrate to patients the innervation of the outer annulus. And of course, under flexion, the capsule is going to be stretched, so that's a possible pain generator. And, but if we do have a decrease in, in pain and flexion, we have to be thinking about several things as well. This could be helpful part of the differential. It could be a, a disc bulge that is retracting, for example. We also know that under flexion, the facets are going to be less imbricated, so they slide up and away from one another. But we also know that the IVF increases in space as well. Again, it's very helpful to have patients look down into the model to show them the innervation of the annulus. Now, of course, under extension, there are a few things that we should be thinking about with regards to pain generators as well. We have to be thinking about the facet primarily as the facets imbricate. We have a disc bulge and we know that the disc will bulge more in extension. We've seen this with upright MR. And we also know that the IVF will decrease in size as well. So of course under extension the facets will imbricate. If there's inflammation that will be a pain generator. Like I was saying in extension the disc annulus will, will actually fold onto itself just like a tire and will push posteriorly and if there's not much space in the canal this can generate symptoms. And of course the IVF will narrow in extension as well. So patients can really get an understanding about their dynamic motion in the pain generators. On the contralateral side, you can actually demonstrate very easily how the nucleus will get translated posteriorly, and if they have back or leg symptoms, you can explain the symptoms associated with the nucleus pushing posteriorly. You can see here the facet rides up as well. So we have to be thinking on the differential about the capsule. So this model is very useful in getting patients to understand clearly where their pain generators are.